Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so obvious, I believe, that I'm not Jeff Carlson. <laughs> if it isn't obvious, we need to talk afterwards. Um, this is the third Sunday of Advent. From the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. My friends, let us pray together. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, God our ruler, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrection and ruler, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You see, when you get to be my age, it gets harder. I'm just so jealous of how you guys can just run up into the slide on the floor like that. I used to be able to do that, you know? Well, anyway, today we're going to hear about the light of the world. And I have a quiz for you. Do you guys ever take quizzes like in school or something like that? This is really hard. Okay. Now, what is this? Up. Wow, he's got an A already. <laughs> Good job. Now, can you see the light bulb? No. You can't see the light bulb. Okay. So tell me, is the light right now on or off? off. How do you know? Are you sure? How would you know if it's off? Because it's not working right now. It's not working. And how can you tell it's not working? Because it's off. <laughs> when I was a college professor, I had a, I had a lecture on that concept, but we won't go there. Is how would how do you know it's on? Mm hmm. Well, let me do something. Is the light on or off now? On. How do you know? Because there's light over there. <laughs> there's a light over there. Um, so you're sure that it's on? Yes. i got another hard question for you. Can you see the light bulb? No. no. But you know it's on. You know it's there, right? Uh-huh. And why do you know it's there? Because the light bulb's in there. Well, you had the answer, I think. What were you going to say? <laughs> it was the right answer. Go ahead and say it. Because it's shining on the ceiling. Exactly. <laughs> it's shining on the ceiling there. Do you know, I, when I was a little boy, I, someone taught me that Jesus is like a light bulb. He's just full of light and love and wonderful things. But we can't really see the light bulb, can we? No. We can see the light, the love, the compassion, the kindness through the reflection, right? So Jesus is this little light. Oh, don't look in there. <laughs> Jesus is this little light in here. Who do you think is up there on the ceiling? Who are those people? That's us. We reflect Jesus' love to other people. And that way they know that Jesus is there. And when we don't, we can't tell. So Jesus is like a light bulb. And because we shine the light to other people, they can see Jesus. Did you get the idea? Yeah. Was that, was that our one? <laughs> you all got an A on the test. Good job, everybody. Thank you for coming up. And I'm sure Pastor Jeff will be back next week. I consider Advent to be a very important time to me personally. My mother absolutely loved Advent. 
She loved seeing manger scenes. So every year I think of her when I see the Advent candles and manger scenes. Maybe this time bring forward some early memories in your life that uh, you remember about Advent and getting ready for Christmas. Let us pray. Praise to you, O oh God. You hold our joy and sorrow. You bring life to our strength and life out of death. Bless us as this light grows. Instead of sorrow and sun to the real end. Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. By your wonders here at hand, transform the lives of all the suffering. Do not despise the words of prophets, 
but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Obtain, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. For the word in scripture, for the word among us, for the word within us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Then they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the, nor the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. <laughs> this took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise Praise to Christ. Christ. Well, that's quite a powerful statement if you think about it. Who the heck are you? Uh, well, I'm not this guy, and I'm not that guy. I'm just some. Think about what he said. I am one voice singing out in the wilderness, or crying out in the wilderness. He was saying, I'm just saying what's in my heart. I know to be true. I'm just here, forgetting what all the dogma is and everything. I'm just speaking the truth. I love what John says. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify for the light. That's why I did the children's sermon about the light goal. That light was to testify to the real light. And that's what John really was. Let's look at Genesis 1, verse 6. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the light, lesser light to rule the night. The lesser light to rule the night. And I have some interesting questions about this idea. First, what or who are these lights in our real world today? Now, yes, we could say it's the sun and the moon. But one thing I've seen in the scriptures is there are a lot of metaphors, there are a lot of hidden messages about our day-to-day -day life. Let's accept the idea that Jesus is the greater light and that we, as his followers, are the lesser light. Like my little story about flashlights, we reflect love and compassion during times of darkness, and the moon reflects the sun at our night. And I think we were doing that during the times of COVID. It was a dark time. We were doing our best to reflect the light when it was very dark. When Jesus walked among us 2,000 years ago, the world saw the light directly. Can you imagine looking at Jesus Christ, the light bulb himself, back in those days? It, I think I would have been overwhelmed. Now we can see the light from the bulb when someone allows that light to reflect from himself or herself. Second question, 
How do we reflect the light? We are reflecting the light when we forgive someone for harming us. We are reflecting the light when we visit someone who is sick or struggling. We are reflecting the light when we see the pain others struggle with. We reach out as best we can to help. And a story from my life came to mind. As many of you know, I was a single dad for a while, and I had three little girls, ages two, four, and six at the time. And two, four, and eight, excuse me. My daughter, Sarah, who was two at the time, had to go into the hospital. She was very sick. And they said I couldn't go in the room with her. And I heard her calling, calling, calling. And I didn't know what to do. So I stayed outside the door, on the floor, for a night and a half, all night, throughout the next day, and into the next night. And every time she would call out, I would say, I'm here, I hear you. By the way, I am not the one that I'm pointing out. There was a wonderful nurse. A lady saw me, and she came over and she said, I understand the rules. What can I do to help you? So she brought me a blanket. She brought me a pillow. In the morning, she brought me orange juice and a little bit of breakfast. Mm. Through the day, she did things for me. And another nurse came along. That wasn't in their duties, I'm sure. You know, their duties were to check temperatures, change bandages, things like that. It wasn't to bring stuff to some guy sitting in the hallway listening for his daughter. So I've always considered them as a light of Jesus Christ being reflected back on me. Then the question comes to me, what makes us stumble and stop reflecting the light? There are days when it's hard to reflect the light. Things of this society, this world, will throw obstacles, clouds between us and the light. Clouds of fear, of pain, and depression will block the light. I myself have struggled with that quite a bit, but I still continue to look through the clouds for the light. Then the question comes up, what can we do with those people who are struggling in pain? This is where all of us come in. When one of us struggles with these clouds, when it's dark and they can't see the light, the rest of us need to reach out and bring the light to that person. Not through words. In all the years that I've served as a pastor, one thing I realized, it isn't words that we bring light to people. It's by our presence by our compassion, by our caring. Be there for someone. Make sure they don't walk alone. That was that nurse in the hospital. She kept coming over and asking if I needed something. I felt like I wasn't isolated in a darkened hallway alone. As many of you know, for about 13 years now I've been studying trauma. There is one treatment that stood out to me when I studied it that can reduce the impact of trauma considerably. Often, we leave those <clears throat> who are suffering alone. We're hesitant to walk with them in their pain. You understand what I'm talking about. When someone's in pain, you pull away from that. You don't want to get pulled in. We are social creatures. And we need one another when we're carrying pain. Yes, one of the biggest answers for people experiencing trauma is to not feel alone. It isn't magic words. It's being there with them. Being the light, again, is not about words. It's about holding each other up, holding a hand, putting an arm around them, bringing them a casserole, coming over and sweeping their porch, whatever it might be. That person who's in pain, who can't find the light, will feel understood, accepted, and cared for. It's about buying a meal and listening, or folding laundry with that person in pain. In 1985, when I was that single dad, and I was alone at Christmas, I broke down crying, overwhelmed. Great clouds formed around me that day. I couldn't see anything but darkness. I cried out to God and felt a presence that seemed to say, know that I love you. I am with you, even in the pain. 
I have taken that as an example of how we could walk with others in pain. Know that I love you. Know that I walk with you. I'm here for you. In all the hardest times of my life, there has been someone who's come over and said, can I help? I care about you. Did they fix the problem? Most of the time, no. But I'll tell you what, I clung to that person. There was one person that came over and visited me weekly. And I'd open the door and I felt this lightness. And the person just came over once and brought me a cheeseburger. That was the best cheeseburger in my life. Because he came in and ate with me. Did he tell me how to fix my life? No. He just came and walked with me. He lived my life. I felt the presence of the greater light, Jesus, in one of the worst moments of my life and realized, here's the point, we are called to do the same for others. This to me is the core of the Christian message. We are to be the light for those who are struggling. And I've seen an awful lot of darkness and struggling around us recently. Jesus offers us an invitation. Bring light to those in pain and need this Christmas season. Our lesser lights can bring a lot of healing. If you've been healed, and I dare say many of you have, maybe do the same for someone else. I forgot to bring my flashlight up. <laughs> Let's reflect the light for others in our society this Christmas. Let us pray. Father, I pray your love fills each of us this Christmas season. Bring us to people in pain. Let us be the love, the light, the kindness, the compassion, the walking word that these people need. Let them see that you indeed are the light. Father, give us strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first word you ever spoke was light, and the heat from your voice thawed us. You spoke your poetry into being, created with words like sacred alchemy to make even a fragile thing give birth to the holy. You began with words, a genealogy of faith, lit a fire in the human voice and said, testify and said, create, and said, come, listen to the voices weaving the sum of life, still hanging in the loom. This is the plea of Eve, fashioned from earth, speaking with dust still on her breath. Become a little more pregnant every day with poems and books, movements and dreams, still developing cell by cell. Carry them until they're ready to be born with depth, to speak of experience and expression as one. Wait a while. Where the root at night grows, you'll feel its movement coming ashore. Give in to parenting your close-knit gift to the world. This is the plea of Mary, who took time to be holy, held a fire in her belly, and pondered it in her heart. Become a little more pregnant every day with God and God's voice, with hope and promises. Build the church inside you, 
not a building, but a soul. Faith straining to have birth in the silence of a holy night and a dawn of grace. May the hope and the peace of God be with you all always. And also with you. Let us share that sign of peace. Peace. Peace to everyone on the TV, too.